we have had many veterans who were just unable to do their lives. Mm-hmm. We've had people who had a gun in their mouth the week before. We've had tragic, tragic uh, cases. And in some cases, they were unable to be spouse. They were unable to be child to their own parent. They were unable to be a parent, work in their chosen vocations. They were unable to be part of a community. Such is the nature of these diseases. The the program that we've been talking about is the first program. And it is something that we uh, see as directly beneficial in a long-term way for people whose lives are, are do not have any further interaction with horses. Hello, and welcome to the Equus Film and Arts Fest podcast the only program for horse lovers who have a fondness for horses in film, art, and literature. Each week, we will have interesting conversations with equestrian filmmakers, artists, and authors from around the world, discussing the nature and challenges, as well as the triumphs of creating their work. Ready to talk horses and film and the arts? Here's your host, Julianne Neal, along with Lisa Dearson, festival founder and director. Welcome back to the podcast. It's time for a new season. Today, we'll be speaking with one of the longtime supporters of the film festival, Mike Dunn of Equine Empowered Therapy. EET is a fully certified 501c3 designed for veterans who are experiencing difficulty reintegrating into civilian life. EET utilizes natural horsemanship and rescued horses to provide programs to achieve therapeutic success, and they do specialize in Mustangs. In today's conversation, we'll hear more from Mike about the program. Mike, welcome to the podcast today. Well, thank you very much, and um, hello to your listeners. Hello, hello. I, I'll I'll tell you before we get started. You told me in in some of our introductory emails, you're just an old cowboy, and so you put me at ease with that statement uh, from the get go. But I think you have to be a pretty perceptive cowboy to have done everything that you've done and um, to have started this this organization. So first of all, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what led you to horses in the beginning? Well, I was born around. Them. I may have been born in a horse stall, but at the time, uh, my family couldn't afford um, tractors. So horses were everything. They were our farm implements. They were our transportation still. They were um, our pleasure. They serve in really vital ways, uh, which I believe is characteristic of that time and before, long before. Horses have always been vital in human lives. So I say to people, you know, I'm an accident of education, but the only thing I, only job I ever really wanted to have was being a cowboy all my life. And that remains so today. I was kind of adopted by the biggest animal in the Salt Lake City um, area, um, a massive horse named Chief. And he adopted me as a tiny little boy and he just looked after me and that was that, you know? So I've done a lot of stuff. I've done a little rodeo. I've done, been around them all my life. Uh, Today they are the cheapest form of psychotherapy. So um, I'm a veteran myself and was really grabbed by an article in the Los Angeles Times about veterans uh, 
gentling wild horses. And the, the whole article was a well-written article, but the whole article was about <clears throat> the veterans, mm. the effect on the veterans. Mm -hmm. So I've been sitting on the couch being upset at long waiting and veterans not being able to get a care that they needed for traumas of their service and, and so forth. And as I read that article, I thought, well, I could do that. <laughs> you know, I know how to do that. And um, I got a kick in the pants from Bruce Boss, a, a dear friend, non-horseman. Uh, he sent me the, the same article about four days later with kind of an implicit message that was, well, let's do something. So that's how we started with uh, Equine Empowered Therapy. Well, I noticed on your website, it, your tagline sort of is um, serving veterans, horses, and those who admire them. And I, the, I love that piece at the end, those who admire them, because there is just something about the horse and that connection that is made. And so I, I know that there's been some powerful work going on in, in your, um, well, through your organization. And so there's a lot of, intimacy and partnership and communication. And um, I, I think underlying all that, there, there has to be a level of trust. So how do you build that level of trust or how do you encourage that level of trust between the veterans who come out and the horses that they're interacting with? Well, I'm gonna quote somebody who um, is dear to me, um, who's sitting right here. Uh, Natural horsemanship breaks down trauma. So when we apply the principles, the old principles, well, I shouldn't say old, but uh, really emanating from um, Bill and Tom Dorrance. Mm -hmm. um, when we break that down, when we slow it down, when we break it into smaller pieces, we achieve intimacy. That's, that, that's the right word, the word that you used. Uh, we have the horse become the horse. We begin to see the way horses communicate. We, be, we become more observant. In so doing, we become more, more observant of ourselves. And ultimately we get present that's the mm -hmm. big thing, the mm -hmm. single biggest thing. <laughs> when I look at our world today, how many of us are truly present? Oh, that's so true. So true. It With is all the, the technology and everything else. It's getting getting everybody out into nature and, and interacting. Absolutely. Yeah, we're planning this thing, the next thing, and the thing after that. Mm -hmm. And the horse says, Whoa, wait a second. If you want to be in my herd. You have to be present now. If there's a bear that's coming up, that's gonna eat us, we need to be vigilant. We need to be ready to go. We need to have clear communication so that when we have to skedaddle, we're not gonna trample each other. Mm. The young ones, the infirm, all of us are gonna take off and we're not gonna trample each other. They force you to trust yourself. If you want to be in their herd, you better trust yourself. You can't be your image. You can't be your trauma. You can't be your fear. Unless that is what you are right this instant. Mm. So when, when veterans come out, you, do you have like a step-by-step -step program or is it a lot of just in the, in the beginning stages anyway, the getting to know you part? Do you, does that sort of flow? How does the program work? Uh, it, well, the, the programs are about four to six hours, and, uh -huh. and we, we like groups of about two to four veterans, though we've done them with one. Mm -hmm. um, and it really starts with a basic introduction to how you, how you approach a horse. 
right? Um, how you capture a horse, how you then, once you have done that, how you send them, right? So all of this is on the ground. Mm -hmm. And we, we have some outstanding clinicians who help us with this. Uh, so that they're seeing, they're seeing in their own time and way um, the, the reactions to horses for their, from their presence, from their body, from their attitude, from the stiffness they have, from the fear they're experiencing, whatever it is they see how the horses respond and then they begin to see that softening and the gentle side of horses kind of coming together. So that is, all of this is accomplished and it goes the pace of the horse and or the veteran. The two of them have to come into partnership. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense to you, they have to be together, present at the same time. Right. So they so it goes at the speed of which of whichever, mm -hmm. and each individual has his his or her own pace. So we spend we spend whatever amount of time that is. We'll usually use around from the from the corral, or um, we will use a, a round pen. We do a lot of these things unrestrained with the horses. Mm -hmm. and um, allow the veterans more time to um, get movement of the horse with their body, with their feet, and um, eventually um, have touching, touch and feel are mm -hmm. major things, as, as you know, in natural horsemanship. Um, it goes with sense. So as they begin to see th this animal in a different light and they lose themselves or their image of themselves into being present, what you can see is this closeness is occurring. The horse is inquisitive at first and then, you know, gradually comes together. And that is where the miracle power occurs that mm -hmm. power moment occurs right then right and some we see near we see trembling knees and tears it's amazing when that moment of presence and trust self-trust occurs and then the reciprocation and then together mm. That's so special, even just hearing you describe it. I, those, those kind of moments, like you say, they're life-changing. And I know your mission is to provide occupational therapy um, and you partner with ranches and rescues and that sort of thing in your area. But it, are, do, does everybody see that same, like you're, you're describing those moments that are incredibly special. Do, can everybody else see it or, or you can tell it, but can everybody else tell it when they're watching? Well, we don't, you know, it is very intimate. Okay. It's very intimate. So we don't have spectators, we, but yeah. we, do have, we do have people who, um, even very experienced horse people, mm -hmm. you know, we become complacent. I right. become complacent. You don't notice it. You know, you go out there with a load of trouble and you come to the horse and the horse says, well, what are we doing today? And a deep breath, and then, oh, okay, yeah, I got you. <laughs> so, but we are complacent about this. Yeah. Most of us, in fact, all of the great horsemen have experienced these things. Um, so, really, you can observe it. You can see it. One of the reasons that we are um, sponsoring Equus is that we believe that you can see these things in the videos, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we have developed techniques where the um, person view that's taking the, the video or the uh, pictures is inauspicious. 
So mm -hmm. just melting into the background. And we can capture both the words and the, and the, the moments. We can anticipate what's going to happen next. You, you can see it. I, I mean, I'm, I have a good eye, but you can really see how they're coming together. You can see they're just taking us half a step closer. They're looking at each other in slightly different ways, you know? Right. And all of that is, is, is just occurring. Mm. Um, so we really, in truth, Julian, we are just a dating service. <laughs> I never would have put it that way, but you're absolutely right. You're right. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by JA Media Productions and The Marley Project Incorporated. The Marley Project is a nonprofit 501c3 dedicated to equine-assisted services, including learning, equine rescue, and equine-based public service. Our foundation provides programs for mental health and wellness, equine experiences through the arts and literature, and collaborations with local charity partners. So yep. what are the veterans doing when they leave you? Are you preparing them for specific jobs or, or just sort of getting them to, to crack open a shell and be receptive to jobs? How does that work? Well, we have, uh, not quite sure how to answer this one. Um, we have had many veterans who were just unable to do their lives. Mm -hmm. We've had people who had a gun in their mouth the week before. Mm. We've had tragic, tragic um, uh, cases. And in some cases, they were unable to be spouse. They were unable to be child to their own parents. Mm -hmm. They were unable to be a parent. They were unable to work in their chosen vocations. They were unable to be part of a community. And um, such is the nature of these diseases. I don't pretend to know anything about that other than what is ordinary knowledge. But we see, we see that. Mm -hmm. And so the... The, the program that we've been talking about is the first program. And it is something that we uh, see as directly beneficial in a long-term way for people whose lives are, are, do not have any further interaction with horses. Mm -hmm. We see that as long-term, that one session. <clears throat> it also serves us to, for those who have both interest and uh, aptitude in uh, pursuing a mission or a career in, in the equine world, we see that as a place where we can, we can be, where, where they can begin to identify what their, what their aspirations are. Huh. And then we have about 10 different uh, programs. Some of those, most of those are one-on-one -on -one where, where they work with um, partners, uh, clinicians to look at one phase or another. Mm -hmm. Part of that 10-step program is ensuring horse handling. Horse handling is essential to whatever you want to do. If you want to be a veterinarian, right, <laughs> be a shoer, you want to be a rider, you want to do whatever you want to do, you better learn how to handle the horse, right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and you even have a blind veterans program that you're doing in, in partnership with a rehabilitation center, I believe. How And there, I don't know of any other program like that. No. How did no, it's, it's, it's absolutely unprecedented to the best of my knowledge. Mm. Um, out of the blue, we were um, contacted by the Blind uh, Veteran Rehabilitation Center in Long Beach. Now, they are a separate organization. I okay. think there's, are there eight or nine? There's eight of those in the country. 
The one here in, in California serves part of Arizona, I think Oregon and maybe Nevada, that mm -hmm. serves a broader area. Um, we were contacted out of the blue and they said, "Is do you have any programs for blind veterans? And I went, what? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, we thought about it. We have um, a good safety orientation. Mm -hmm. um, I have considerable expertise. Will Friday, who is part of our group, also has expertise in those areas. So risk assessment, risk management. So we thought about it from, uh, from that standpoint. And I have the right horse. That's great. So we went back to him and we said, we think that we could do something. Um, put an, an agenda together, had several discussions. And then we just decided to do it. Mm. It is enormously successful. Um, wow. In fact, last week, they called us to book two more, pro more programs. Again, two to four veterans at a time, one in June, one in July. Um, you're able to provide these services, I read somewhere, free of charge for the veteran. And that is incredible. Do they apply? Is there a huge application process? How did they get in? How do they get in touch with you? We have, we've been reliant upon um, the VA, the, the VA itself mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, and, and we go to different events that they, that they have. Um, so we've been reliant on them to, to, to provide veterans to say, okay, well, here's a group. At some of the events, we have sign up lists, and people will sign up if they if they have an interest to to um, um, go through one of our programs. Mm -hmm. Last event we did um, was at, in Long Beach was um, a, a program for MST. That's military sexual drama. Mm. And uh, if you want something re really ghastly, combine that with PTSD. Right. Mm. So that's that's where that's been the source of <clears throat> of our veterans. We love working in collaboration with the VA. Oh, sure. We've met some delightful and dedicated uh, professionals who are on the staff of the VA. Um, and, and whatever anybody has to say about it, don't say it about the people. Mm -hmm. They're overburdened, yes. But boy, I'll tell you, uh, these, these are dedicated folks. Exactly, exactly. Please be sure to tune in next week when Julianne and I have another interesting conversation with one of our Equus Film and Arts Fest filmmakers, artists, or authors. I just have to ask you personally, though, I, I know every cowboy has a, a particular horse. It sounds like you have quite a few um, that are in your program. Which horse would you say is your special horse? Do you have one of your own that, um, that Without a doubt. hugs your heartstrings? Without a doubt. Rags. Tell Rags. me about Rags. Well, he, he, is the, he is the best horse. I've ever been around in my life, and I covers quite a few horses. Um, he was uh, on the big rodeo circuit, um, so Madison Square Garden. But, oh. you know, he won money in four events: um, team roping, barrel racing, oh. um, individual roping, and. Um, he just is the, he, he is absolutely um, athletic and talented. Um, he is, he has, he has taught all of my grandchildren. 
And they all, like me, they all were on horses when they were in diapers. When you get one of those horses that you know you can put that grandbaby on, yeah, he's a keeper. Yeah. He's, a definitely he's the one that I knew would not be spooky at the equipment that the, that the blind veterans have, you know? Right, right. And sure enough, the first group gets out of the, they were transported by one of the therapists. They get out of the car. And the first thing they do is open the trunk and pull out a, a wheelchair. And I thought, oh my God, you know, he's never seen a wheelchair. Uh-huh. So we, we, we took him and we um, introduced rags to a wheelchair and to the, the canes and the other equipment that they, that they had. Uh -huh. And he just, he just melted them. He melted everybody. Wow. You know? uh, so uh -huh. yeah, he, he's the one. Mm -hmm. I've been in the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department in their mounted posse as a volunteer for 15 wow. years. And I'm telling you right now, I put him up against any horse in the state of California Mounted Officers Association. And recently I had a um, hip replacement. And so I was kind of gimpy and walking with a cane and, and stuff and, and was happy to be out with the horses. We were doing a little event and um, um, I, I, I was sitting in the middle of the round pen on, the, on, a, on a boarding, you know, the boarding step. Mm -hmm. And I just had him wandering around and he came over and he sees me with a cane. He came over, he knocked my hat off so just gently so that he could drop his head between my body and the cane. Oh, God. And there he stood for 45 minutes while we were doing this program. Wow. Just nobody's going to mess with my boy. It's thrilling to me to speak with you about your work because I can see so many, so many ways that other people are going to be really excited about it. Really excited. So can I take that to mean that you will, you will come to the festival and travel around as best you can? Yeah, that's what I was thinking is that, um, that I would just come and wander around, you know? I think that's a great idea. We hope you'll join us in the coming season for all our conversations with Equus authors, artists, and filmmakers. The 2022 Equus Film and Arts Fest took place in Sacramento, California, where we introduced the first ever Mustang Summit. In our upcoming podcasts and web chats, we'll hear from not only our Equus authors, artists, and filmmakers, but also some of the tip trainers and other Mustang enthusiasts who participated in the festival. We hope you'll join us.